It's a great uh, pleasure to come to WinLab uh, to share our recent research results on peer-to-peer uh, -peer video streaming. So the title is called The uh, Law of Large Numbers uh, in P2P Video Streaming. Uh, so I guess I will tell you what do I mean by law of large number here. So I guess you know, everybody knows what is law of large numbers, right? So I guess if you go to Wikipedia, the definition will be, say, oh, if you have a bunch of random variables, maybe they follow some uh, common distribution. So even though each uh, variable can take you know, random values, but if you sum it up, take an average, it's predictable, right? So essentially, you can say the average of random variables converge to this uh, expected value. So what you can take away from here is that even though you have many sort of like random individuals, but if you look at sort of like collective, a collective behavior is still predictable. Okay, that's basically the spirit of a uh, law of large numbers. And since I, I'm going to talk about peer-to-peer -peer video streaming, so I guess I'm going to tell you a little bit about you know what is peer-to-peer -peer video streaming. So I guess uh, you know in, on the internet, users want video, right? So one example would be the YouTube. So I guess. Uh, users can upload their own videos, and they can get comments, they can get famous out of it. Okay, so it's what I call the video blog. And at the same time, like it's, uh, you know, now everybody uses uh, Skype for making voice call. And later on, maybe I will say, okay, it will be better, I can see the face of my friend. So which means a video conferencing is coming as well. So I guess uh, now, many sort of like cable providers, and uh, network uh, access providers uh, give you this service called IPTV. So this IPTV service, I guess, uh, you know, you can get a live streaming service, which means you can watch your live channels, like traditional TV channels, and, but those uh, video come to you using IP network, IP packets. And uh, it's also possible that I give, give you this uh, video on demand service, which means you can watch the video whenever you have time, whenever you want. Uh, in terms of content, you can have traditional content, like your CNN break news type of content. And sometimes you can have long traditional content. For example, some kids that play game, they want to watch live broadcast of some other kids playing the same game. So they can learn from each other. Right? This is what I call the broadcast of uh, World of Warcraft. So this kind of video game, and they can learn from the live broadcast. So you cannot imagine that those kind of broadcasts of game come to your TV using traditional cable. So which means you need to find some other way of uh, delivering video there. So definitely, you know, if you look at the possible architecture for video distribution, so you can still use a server-based solution, right? So, uh, so I guess one way of doing this uh, efficiently is this uh, multicast. So if you have a uh, IP network, so you know that you know, this protocol called a multicast protocol allow one source to send data to multiple receivers. But unfortunately, uh, the IP multicast is not available in the current internet. Maybe in your next generation or future internet, that going to enable it. But currently, we don't have that. Okay. So another solution will be uh, like a YouTube solution, right? So they're going to use this CDN or the content delivery networks. So the idea here is uh, YouTube going to push the video close uh, to some servers very close to the users. So whenever a user want to watch this video, they just go to the Sasidian servers to download it, right? Instead of going to the original source server. So again, but if you want to use this Sasidian approach, so you have to pay lots of money. So you still have to pay the Sasidian network and to get your videos hosted there. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about this third approach. So here is what we call the peer-to-peer -peer video streaming. So in this case, you don't need really a very strong server, and actually. What's going to happen will be, so you have a group of peers. They're all interested in watching the same video. Okay? And they're going to help each other trying to retrieve the video. Okay? So the basic thing here is everybody contribute, everybody uh, consume. Okay? So which means you want to utilize the uploading resource, resources available on end systems to help you to do the, distribute the video. So one immediate advantage of doing this is that the infrastructure cost will be very low. So which means you almost only need the server send out one copy of the video. Then after one peer get it, they're going to exchange among them themselves. Hopefully everybody going to get it at the end. Right? So that's sort of like the ideal situation of doing this peer to peer video streaming. So but at the same time, you know, uh, we all we all know that video streaming is pretty challenging. 
because especially if you want to deliver video streaming over the internet, there are lots of problems, right? Because uh, first of all, just because of application, you have very stringent streaming requirement. For example, when you play a video on a computer, you want to make sure that all the video data come to a computer before the playback deadline, right? So which means if you want to have continuous playback on your computer, you want to make sure that data come to your computer smoothly. Okay, but in the current internet, I guess uh, we all know that there are going to be lots of uh, variations, right? So when you set up a connection, uh, sometimes your download speed is high, sometimes your download speed is low. So which means, uh, if you want to guarantee a very good streaming quality, you better make sure that the download rate to each peer is smooth, and also just because the video you have very high rate, you want the download rate also to be high rate, okay? So then you can say uh, whether that's doable or not. Because uh, we all know that peers, they are highly unpredictable. That's what I call here. Right? There are many uh, factors contribute to this. The first one will be the heterogeneity here. So the heterogeneity here, I mean, different peers have different access. Right? Someone have maybe cable access at home. Someone may have DSL. Someone may have dial-up. Right? I mean, so which means in terms of the, how much they can contribute, they are totally sort of like, uh, it's very diverse. And also, in the access part, most likely you have this kind of asym asymmetric residential link. So which means the uplink bandwidth is much, much lower than the downlink bandwidth. So we say that in P2P video streaming, you depends on the peer uploading. If you don't have enough uploading in your system, how can you guarantee everybody get a good quality, right? And also, the, another thing here is these are geographical locations. So which means when you look at a large system, so you're going to get a lot, large number of peers, you don't know where are they, right? So you may have some peer in Asia, some peer in, in North America, or some peer in Europe. So how are you going to organize them together, right? So because definitely one immediate concern is what's the delay, right? Because we know that for video streaming, the uh, delay is also very crucial. OK. So, Another aspect here is what I call unpredictable will be the fluctuations, okay? So one type of fluctuation happens at the peer level. Because uh, in this case, we, what we call the peer churn, so essentially the peers can come and go randomly, right? So in a server-based solution, you know that a server will be there all the time. But in P2P solution, if someone just finish, you know, they don't want to watch this anymore, they just can leave, right? So which means by doing that, they are going to drop the connection to other peers, okay? So another type of fluctuation here will be, the again, the bandwidth variation, right? So let's say you have two peers that set up connection that can exchange some data, but the connection will have to go through the internet. Right? We know that on the internet, there's no guarantee of how much bandwidth you're going to get. So there, immediately, you're going to have this uh, real variations on individual peering connections. So last bullet here is actually pretty important. So we know that most peers are selfish. Right? You say, what do you mean by that? So if I can watch the video without contributing, without uploading, I will be the, the happiest, right? So which means, in this case, how are you going to provide incentives for peers to contribute there? Okay. So if you look at all those three aspects here, you know that those peers are pretty, you know, maybe not dependable, right? So they have all sorts of issues. But how are you going to depend on those peers to deliver very smooth and predictable video quality? That's really the question I want to answer in this talk, okay? So before I get into the answer, let's say, let's, let me first show you some numbers, essentially how successful those uh, P2P streaming system are, okay? So starting with this uh, software called Cool Streaming, this is actually a system coming out of from Hong Kong. This is from HKUST. And uh, in, back in 2003, they did some broadcasts on the internet. They attract around 4,000 simultaneous users. So that's the last number or not, depends on you. So the second example I want to give out here is called PP Live. I guess some of you here also use this software. This is a software from China. I guess it allow you to watch some mostly Chinese uh, TV channels uh, all over the world. So for this software itself, they are offering more than 400 channels live channels on the internet, now maybe more. I guess this is longer, maybe two years back. 
As the channels range from news, sports, movies, games, or some special events. Okay? So, and also in terms of users, they claim they have more than 400,000 users daily. So every day, more than 400,000 users are, are using this software to watch uh, video streaming. So we actually did a measurement study at Polytechnic for this system for one event. This is a very popular event uh, among Chinese. So this is actually the 2006 Chinese New Year, uh, sort of like the party. So for that one event, it's four hours. So our measurement shows that there are more than 200,000 users using the software to watch this live broadcast of this event. So the video rate is from 400 to 800 kilobits per second. So if you do a calculation quickly, so the total traffic rate is 100 gigabits per second. So if you want to use a server to serve all those users, you'd better have this much bandwidth. But from our knowledge, the PP Live they have only very, very weak servers. So which means the contribution is really from peers. Right? So of course, PP Live is not the only system. So on the internet, you can find lots of uh, similar oh, or PP Stream and. Uh, or even this uh, TV ads, all sorts of software. Amazingly, most of the software are from Asia, from, from China. I guess for some reason I don't want to discuss here. So, so essentially, you know, now you see the large numbers. Then you say, what do you mean by uh, law of large numbers in P2P video well, streaming? Let's, you know, um, to be completely clear, right? So, in one of like PP Live, they run the server that is producing these video streams, and and. And then somehow the, the 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 service is being duplicated by these peers. It's like it's all this is a live event, right? Right. So this is a live event. So I'm going to talk a little bit about you know more details about PB Live. It will become yeah, yeah, it will become clear. I guess when I get to that point. Essentially, I guess I just told you the large numbers. Then you say, what do you mean by law of large numbers here? Okay. Let's look at basically the 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 central question I want to address in this talk is essentially say. How a large number of loosely coordinated, unpredictable peers collectively converge to this uh, predictable system-wide video streaming quality, right? So we said that you know, video streaming is very challenging because you have lots of requirement. Uh, we know that peers are not predictable, right? But just because you have large number of them, somehow when they get together, it makes things happen, right? So let's say we want to understand what is underneath driving force here. So essentially, in today's talk, I'm going to first talk about large numbers, a little bit more details. Uh, basically, it's a measurement study of PB Live. Then I'm going to talk about law of large numbers. So for those law of large numbers, apply to generic systems, which means does not confine to PP Live, apply to any P2P streaming system. Okay. So I'm going to talk about you know so maximum streaming rate can be supportable. I'm going to talk about the minimum delay bound. And, and also, I'll give you some idea about how to achieve them. So it's kind of aggressive to talk about all this in this one talk, So which means for each of them, I just give you a flavor of it. I mean, if you're really interested, I can look at our papers. That's really the reason I'm here. I would encourage you guys to look at our papers. So let's say, look at the first step. So I can talk about the large numbers, right? So I can look at large numbers in PP Life. So to come back to your question, let's look at an overview of PP Life. So this is actually free software. Everybody likes free stuff on the internet. And uh, it's window-based, which means I don't think they have a Linux version. I don't think they have a Macintosh version yet. Maybe some of guys here can develop some a Linux version later on. So, but the protocol is actually proprietary, which means it's not open source. And uh, unfortunately, it's not encrypted. So which means allow us to do something later on to uh, do the measurement. So it provides both live and on-demand video services, which means you have live channels. You can also watch uh, on-demand video. Uh, originally, I guess it's out of a university in China, but now it has been commercialized. They did get some venture uh, capital investment and uh, are really pushing hard to the, uh, of this software on there. So, it becomes very popular within Chinese community since back in 2005. If you are really interested in that, you can go to this website. You can, they also have an English version of the so like a, uh, introduction and description of this uh, software. So the system actually idea is not that deep, essentially. 
So they're really inspired by the BitTorrent, but they deliver live, let's say, video streaming there. Okay. So the reason I call it uh, BT lag is because they also have this concept of chunk. So everybody, you know, have some maybe knowledge about BitTorrent. So there, so you are going to you have one file there. You are going to divide this file into chunks. Then pure is going to exchange chunks. Okay. So here is kind of similar here. Basically, the first thing you do is you do the encoding, right? So you encode the video using uh, either real player format or Windows media player format. And the streaming rate will be from 300 to 800 kilobits per second. Okay? So after you do the encoding, so you're going to divide the encoded video into chunks again. Okay? Then peers are going to download chunks either from the server or from other peers when they are available on other peers. Uh, at the same time, peers also upload chunks, right? So after you download some chunks, you want to contribute to the community. So which means you want to, uh, if some peers ask some chunks you have, you should upload to them. Okay. So, and after you got enough chunks, so you are going to put them in the buffer, trying to put them back into order. So at the end, you can stream the, receive the chunks to the video, uh, let's say video player there. Okay. So essentially, by, to do this, you just need some very basic information, right? For example, you want to lo look at the peer list. So you want to know what those other peers are watching the same video at the same time, right? So that later on I can go to them to ask for chunks. And also, you need another information is what we call the buffer map. So you want to know for each peer, what does it have, right? So whether this peer have the chunk I want. So uh, peers are going to exchange the information use the buffer map, what we call here. Basically, it's an index of chunks available on a peer. Okay? So if you look at sort of like the, the whole system, they do have a little bit of server infrastructure here. They have the host, for example, they have to host the video, the video source, right? They have to do the encoding. And also they have to have this uh, channel list server, basically tell you what are the channels available. And also they have this uh, peer list server, basically for each channel, what are those peers uh, are watching this channel, okay? Let's just follow one peer. So let's say when you download the software, and uh, you want to watch your video, what are you going to do? So first, you download the software, right? So you first talk to the channel list server, so you find out what are the channels available, okay? So after that, then you're going to pick one channel, then you're going to talk to the peer list server, you say, what are those other peers watching the same channel, right? So essentially, you're going to, the channel list server is going to give a sort of like a list of peers. After you get a list, essentially you find out other peers on the network, then what you're going to do is trying to set up connection. Maybe not to all the peers, just subset of peers, right? So essentially, you're going to say uh, request chunks from those peers. Uh, if those peers come to you, you also need to upload chunks to them. Okay? Sometimes, if you cannot get enough chunks from those peers, you can always go to the server to ask for chunks. That's kind of the last resort. So, which means you don't want to overload the server. Okay. So after you have, so after those, uh, you have those connections, data are going to come to you, right? So essentially, what you're going to do, you are going to put those chunks in a buffer and put them back into order. Essentially, then you're going to do the streaming locally to a video player here. Okay. So it looks like you know the whole thing is kind of straightforward. It's not really uh, rocket science or whatever. But the reason I say it's simple, but it works. So which means. This is online. This is online. So, the, so this whole process right. happening in real time. It's the pseudo real time. It's not exactly real time. I mean, you have to. I mean, this can be. Yeah. It's online, but with some delay. Yeah. To right. So I mean, so it depends on sort of like the buffering time. So I guess I'm going to show you some number. So what is the delay performance? Yeah. So most likely it's several seconds. So if you have the program get delayed for five seconds, whether you call it live or not live, depends on you. So of course, if you watch your soccer game, right? So if someone in your neighborhood was using the TV to watch it, that's different, right? So it's just, you know, it's got one guy cheer for five seconds before you, then you just feel pissed off. Yeah. Five seconds is very good. I mean, you know, if you get just HP broadcasts, you're exactly. a few seconds behind analog. Yeah, especially the football, like, a, you know, halftime show, right? So, <laughs> so is there any penalty if I directly go to the video source, or is there any benefit? I mean, 
if I'm a like selfish peer, there's no build connections with other peers, but I always directly go to the source. So the the thing is. So you do that at your, at your own risk. Because uh, as I said, the video source server they have limited bandwidth. Even if you go there, you may not get anything. But it will have more bandwidth than peers, right? It, and you can... No, no, no. So, I mean, if you go to peer, there are many peers you can go to. When you go to server, you only have one server. Right? So if everybody goes to server, you are going to compete with other so peers, so which means you don't get anything. Oh, okay. Right. Well, Currently, the protocol, as I said, is closed, so which means you cannot really change it. So when you download it, you have to follow the protocol, yeah. right? So initially, you mentioned that the peers might be selfish. They don't. They just want to watch and not upload. Right. So, so one, one trick you can play is not with the software. You can set up some kind of a filtering in your computer. You say, I just block the uploading or something like that. So currently, they don't have this kind of incentive mechanism built in there. <laughs> So which means you can you can cheat a little bit, but if everybody begin to cheat, that whole system can collapse. <laughs> okay. If I move on, any other question here? So when you say oh, the algorithm is proprietary, is that the algorithm that determines uh, like what chunks you get from what peers? Right. That's the, the proprietary element. Right. So which means it's uh, it's not a which means, and also the, the whole thing is just you get a binary, you cannot change the source code. Um, so, uh, another question. Sure. So, will the delay go up if you have more peers, or will the delay actually go down if you have more peers? Well, actually, that's interesting. So, we found out when you have more peers, the delay will be shorter. It will be shorter. Yeah. Uh, how many servers uh, are you need to manage all the peers? Well, I guess, uh, as I said, you know, PP Lab, the server is actually very limited. They don't have very strong servers. So I, what I heard is the server uploading bandwidth is uh, 10 megabits per second total or something, or, or 100. Definitely less than 1 gig or 10 gig. Uh, I'm really confused about the, there seems to be some sort of a causality relationship between who is serving who. Uh -huh. In this diagram, peer zero is, uh, so let's say peer 0 is accepting service from peers 1, 2, and 3. Then you said that peers 1, 2, and 3 also demand service from peer 0. Yeah. So now if they're all watching the same program, it can, you're saying <coughs> that it can be that uh, chunks that have not yet arrived at these peers could arrive at peer 0 first or right. peer right. first, and then depending on who gets it first, they Right. Okay. Yeah. So, OK. The Suddenly, everybody interested in this. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sometimes go up multi hop. Yeah. So in this case, will be uh, so. Let's say this guy may download from the server first, uh -huh. then he upload a chunk to this peer, then this peer upload a chunk to this peer, and uh, then uh -huh. that will be by multi hop. Right? Is that what you mean? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you do have a VOD service, so so which means, yeah. yeah I'll never use this. You should try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, essentially, as I said, you know, you know, we we want to sort of understand how it works and why it's successful. So we need to do some sort of like measurement study there. Okay, but the problem is that the system is not an open system. Okay, but fortunately, the signaling is not encrypted, so which means. We have some very good programmers there. They really did a good job to do analysis of the protocol. Just monitor, sort of like a sort of like a message exchange of between peers. They, we got a sort of like a reverse engineering the whole protocol. Okay. So at the end, what we did is we come up with our own version of the client. So which means it's what we call a crawler. So we have a program. So we join the network as if it's a legitimate client. So after we join the network. We can collect lots of information. It's what we call the, the crawler here. Okay, the crawler trying to pretend to be a legitimate peer, and now after you join the system, you are going to get the peer list, right? You're going to collect the peer list. You find out what are those other peers in the system, and also you talk to other peers. They, they tell you what do they have, right? So they are very friendly. Okay, so you say, okay, do you have this chunk? Do you have this chunk? Do you have this chunk? Okay. So which means essentially we collect lots of information about so like a population, and also about the data downloading progress on all the peers there. Okay, this is sort of like the crawling part. 
And also, we, at the same time, we do a passive sleeping. So which means we set up some legitimate peers uh, within Poly campus and also in Brooklyn uh, residential area. So after we have those kind of uh, machines running PP Live, we can capture all the packet trace, right? So after we ca capture packet trace, we know exactly how fast data will be downloaded and uploaded, how many collections uh, they have, and what are the uh, sort of like peering uh, statistics there. So essentially, this is some kind of sort of like a diagram about this whole measurement platform. So I guess uh, using this platform, we collect lots of uh, information about this uh, PP Live system. So I guess I'm going to share some of numbers again with you. Okay. So since we're talking about large numbers, right? So let's first look at the peer population. So this is actually the one channel over, let's say, one day period. Okay. So you can say it goes up and down, and this is what we call the diurnal trend. So essentially, the peak here is really 8 p.m. from uh, 1 a.m. in China. So I guess uh, you can imagine that most users are from, from China there. Okay. So this is sort of like one week. So you look at the weekly trend. So you have Monday, Friday, Sunday. Of course, weekend, you are going to have more users. right? So this is sort of like the diagram I just talked about. This is a Chinese New Year. This is a sort of like a, this is a, over two days. So I want to sort of like emphasize a little bit here is really this uh, flash crowd phenomenon. Okay, so this is a time, 8 o'clock is a time that the show starts. So before that, I guess we only have maybe 10,000 users. So quickly ramp up to 30,000, then quickly go to 200,000. So which means you have a flash crowd phenomenon here, right? So which means you have suddenly have a large number of users want to use this software to watch this channel, but this system is pretty scalable in a way that you say, this is actually four hours, so which means the user population pretty stable. So that's an indication that quality is good, right? Otherwise, people are going to go away. So this is kind of indirect measure of this uh, scalability. And so which means the whole thing, the four hour period is uh, scalable, and uh, the quality is very stable. So which means the whole system itself is uh, very scalable. Okay. So now you may wonder, say, what is the geographic distribution of peers, right? So here we have three curves. Blue curve, everything below the blue curve appears from Asia. So everything between the green curve and blue curve are users from North America. And everything above this green curve is from other places, you know, Europe, uh, other places. You can say that, I guess, uh, if it's local time, 8 p.m., most users from China. It's uh, also, I guess, if local time, U.S., quite a bit of users from U.S., maybe some IP address from Rutgers. Actually, we have all the IP addresses available. So if you want to verify that, I can, I can check into that. Okay. So essentially, what I want to say here is for this system, it's pretty successful, it's scalable, and it's a worldwide system. So you do have users from all over the world. Okay. So, so next statistics, a large numbers is about peering connections. Right? We said that the, the core part of P2P is peers help each other. Right? So which means when you want to download a video, you don't go to one peer, you don't go to one server, you go to actually many peers. Or actually, uh, so by doing that, you have this uh, multiplexing game. Right? So which means if one peer cannot give you much, maybe the other peer can give you more. Okay? So what I'm showing you here is, so we're actually monitoring two programs. So one program is uh, what we call popular program. So which means this is a program with a large number of peers. Another program is called unpopular crop, uh, program, which means the number of uh, uh, sort of like users are smaller. Okay, so we have two curves. One is a red curve that's corresponding to the monitor we set up in Poly Campus. So one is a green curve. This is the monitor set up in my home in Brooklyn. Okay, so you can say that for the campus nodes because it has very high uh, bandwidth connection. So it's actually supporting 40 peers in average. It's pretty dynamic. It's over time. Uh, up and down, up and down. So which means the average is support like 40 peering connections. For the residential, I guess, uh, you know, just because of the connectivity is worse. So it's actually supporting the number of peering connections, about 20. Okay. But if you move on to the unpopular program, for the campus peer, you still have like 40 connections. But for the cable access at the residential area, number of connections is eight. Which means by doing this, you say that those campus nodes is really 
play a very important role here, right? So they really find out lots of video that are supporting lots of peers. But for the residential area nodes, they do have considerable, I guess, uh, peering connections for this popular program. But for unpopular program, I guess the number of connections will be smaller just because in the whole system you have less number of peers. Okay. So some channels have more users. Let's say some channels you may have 10,000 users watch the video. Some channels you only have maybe 100 users. That's what, what we call the popular or unpopular. So, so why is it that the, whether popular or not, why does the campus node form as many, as many connections for one as for the other? So for the campus node, I guess for both popular and unpopular, they both have very high number of hearing connections. Because they have lots of bandwidth, right? So which means peers want to connect to those uh, super peers to get data, essentially. I mean, for the residential area, even though I can connect to you, but you, if you cannot give me much, I'm going to go away. Right? right. OK. Somehow, the, does the campus know, because he has a lot of bandwidth, does he download and participate in, in programs that he isn't actually interested in? It's not happening yet. OK, so, so the, even though a program is unpopular here, it happens to be an unpopular program that you, this campus node has decided to be interested in. So basically, you know, for PP Live, you only upload when you watch this video. So which means that the campus node here is a participant. It's right. declared itself it's interested. Right. Right. Because this one is like experimental, so it's not a real user. So maybe it's participating in anything just to to test the um, connection numbers. So, for this one, actually, for the campus node, we actually set up, a, we actually select a channel to click it to watch it. So which yeah, means it's a real channel. Artificial. Yeah, right. It's artificial, yes. But does that mean 40 is actually its bandwidth limit? Well, because why, even for popular, it's not more than 40? Well, I guess uh, the thing is, it, our campus node is not the only super peer there. I mean, there are also lots of other campus nodes. It's not everybody wants to go to you know, poly campus to download the video, right? So, yeah. No, 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 I think she's asking, I ask a different question. I think the thing that's hidden in the software, whether the fact that it's popped up yeah, yeah. 40 is somehow, uh, right. maybe it's doing some estimate of it. Yeah, that you have this kind of uh, scheduling, basically how peers connect to each other. If you have too many connections, maybe it's, oh, no, sorry, I don't have space for you anymore, right? Okay. So, now let's look at uploading, right? So we said that you know, uh, in this P2P system, uh, you want to be successful, you really need to encourage peers to upload. So let's see what's going to happen here. Again, let's start with the campus node, okay? So we have two curves for this one campus node. This is for the popular program. So the red curve is uh, upload. The green curve is uh, download. So I will remind you that this is uh, in log scale, So which means you're really looking at difference of 10 times, So which means. So what is the y axis? Well, access is a traffic rate, right? So this is uploading rate, this is download rate for this campus node. So which means this campus node, the uploading rate is 10 times the download rate. I really contribute a lot to this uh, whole system, okay? So now let's move on to the unpopular program. So same thing. So essentially, you have this uh, 10 times effect, okay? So this is why we call this campus node amplifier, right? So they download, so like one copy of the video, then they can simultaneously upload 10 copies, let's say, in that sense, okay? So now if you move on to look at the residential nodes. So here, again, the green curve is download, the red curve is upload. You can see that the green curve and red curve, the average is more or less the same. But the upload is more so like you have more solutions. So in this case, you can think of the residential peer is a relay, right? So you download one copy, roughly you upload one copy. This is sort of like the residential load in the popular program. So I guess another figure you can look at is... I have one more question. What's the relationship of the download rate to the, to the source rate of the, the streaming rate of the video? That's essentially the same. So a little bit more, a little bit more. So which means for the super peer, you only need to download one copy, right? So which means, but they have some overhead there. So which means like five percent overhead. So this is actually uh, so the, the video is actually four hundred uh, kilobits per second. Maybe you are downloading at four hundred fifty. So basically, the program is first. It's it's making 
the shirt can accumulate things fast enough to, yeah. uh, to watch the video. And then it uses a capital to, 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 to upload to others. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Can you watch the TV live smoothly in your residential? Yes. So you are talking about here, right? In this situation, in the unpopular program, you can also watch it. Yeah, so here you do have some specs here. But the thing is, you do have buffering. So which means you may get a freeze for a while. You may skip. Where is this rate of this? This is about 400 kilobits per second. OK? So. So, but for this one, essentially the download is still like the video rate, but the upload is almost zero. Remember, here okay, we are looking at this, uh, basically the log scale, right? So, which means that this is really just a sync. They don't really uh, forward, don't really contribute much. So, essentially, this slides tell you that uh, different peers actually play different roles in the uh, uploading video. And now you say, what about the quality? So whether the, the quality is predictable, whether the quality is good for all the peers. So in this case, you know, we have sort of like indirect or unscientific measures, right? Basically, you get a user feedback, right? I mean, it's a uh, subjective feedback from user says that uh, the quality is pretty good, and also user tends to stay. They want to use your software. Now you may say, okay, because it's free, and uh, everybody is patient. They, don't, they are not picky at all. I mean, that might be one of the reasons. Okay, uh, and also the general trend is that if you have more peers, so you're going to have shorter delay, so you're going to have fewer freezing, and you're going to have also faster recovery, which means even if you have freezing, so you can recover fast if you have uh, a large number of peers. And also we did some sort of like direct measure, which means quantitative measure. So what we did is we monitor playback quality on local peers, so we can do that. And also, we developed some tools to automatically analyze the trace, the packet trace. And based on that, you can uh, look at different playback quality. So like, you know, uh, what is the playback continuity? So what is the delay performance? Uh, so on and so forth. OK. So I started basically showing that if you have a popular channel, so 90% of peers experience no freezing or reboot in one hour period, which means you can keep watching this video for one hour. You don't have any problem. It's very continuous. And, but for unpopular channels, basically, if you don't have enough number of peers to watch this channel, the quality varies. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Okay. And also, we talk about buffering, right? So we say that you know, it's not really real time. right? So and, uh, you have to do a little bit of buffering there. So the buffer size is going to be from 10 to 30 megabytes. And uh, the delay, so we said when you click the channel, how long does it pop up? How long does it take for the video to actually start to play? It's actually a wide right range. So sometimes 10 seconds or less than 10 seconds. Sometimes can be three minutes. OK? So essentially, if you want to look at you know, uh, startup delay distribution, so this is what we did. So since we don't know the exact number, we have some kind of inference technique. Basically tell you that the upper bound and lower bound or startup delay. So which means you look at the distribution here, so most of them like delay is within one minute, which is not too bad, but it's not real time, really. And another phenomenon here is what we call the lag. So essentially different peers, the playback progress is different. Some peers watching the video earlier, some peers watch the video later. So which means this is what we call the lag among peers, so which means the largest lag can go up to 200 seconds. That's almost three minutes. So which means some peers watching the video three minutes ahead of you. I mean, just because of location or just because of the bandwidth. So how do you measure the performance? That's what I got. You know, as I said, you will have this crawler, right? We crawler join the system, and uh, so they can talk to peers, right? They can find out what, what do they have. So for each data, you know, some peers maybe download the data 300 seconds ahead of the other peer. That's an inference again. I mean, that's uh, what we call the inference. Here. But can you get all the things in the whole world that is currently watching 
we tried because the, the crawler, so you have to do it fast enough, right? You have to talk to a large number of peers. So this is. Just keep asking. Go there one time, give you a list. Go there another time, give you a list. Also, you can talk to other peers that can give, give their list to you. So you can compare IP address, right? So you keep asking, keep asking. You don't get any more IP address. That's a good indication that it saturates. But do you know if there's any you know, filter from the server side? Maybe they, what, uh, they look at your IP address first and they only give you a list at uh, close to you. Uh, when we did it, they didn't do that. Maybe they are doing that now. <laughs> different, different crawlers. So, so this, the different, this uh, graph on the right is um, the delay seen by here over time. So, okay. Or is it there's several? Like it's hard to say. Several. So let's say in this channel, we have maybe 1,000 peers. Okay, peer one is playing this video at time zero. Right. Maybe peer one thousand is playing this video at the time three hundred seconds. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. The lag. So, what is the actual curve? Like, I see time on both axes. So here, this is the time. Basically, the program, uh, the video playback time. At any time, we measure the the sort of like a, the wide, the big difference, the largest difference between peers, right? So, which means for this, this each time corresponding to the rate part of Yeah, so we, we just look at the, the trace we collected. So we cannot guarantee this is a whole system, right? So we got a response maybe from uh, 800 peers. So it, it, part of the protocol allows you to ask a peer how far along he is. No, no, no. So it's not that. So actually, part of the protocol is you can ask the peer what do they have. Right? By, by knowing that information, you can do some inference. Oh, okay. So right, that seems a little tricky, right? Yeah. Because they have up to something, and then they have some. Right. So we, you have to develop some rule. You say, you know, maybe you have uh, 20 chunks in your buffer that start to play. Yeah. If you have such a rule, you can do inference. Okay. Right. So, so the last one is what we call the theory effect. So essentially, we keep track of the playback time for different peers at different places. So different colors corresponding to playback time of different peers. You can say that if one peer is ahead of one another peer, it's always ahead. That's mostly because maybe the location, again, the bandwidth. So in all, it's what we call the peer-to-peer pseudo-lab system, right? Because it's not really, uh, this is the best you can do, actually. So if you are interested in more results, we do have two papers for you to look at. So one is on the transmission on, transaction on multimedia, the another one will be a GSEC. Okay. So do you actually confirm that those peers played earlier or um, um, surrounded by more peers? Well, actually what we did is we look at the IP address, we load the location. Okay. So most likely if the location closer to the source, yeah, so. Not necessarily. You may have uh, amplified in U.S. Okay, from sourcing, which means the playback will be later than just normal period in China. Right. Yes. Uh, so. There are some research on build up sort of like the, the distribution backbone using super peers. Then those backbone bring together video first, that can push push down to normal peers. Yeah, I mean, but this one is not. So I'm talking about uh, some research efforts there. Sounds good. Like, well, the super peers can get um, directly connect to the servers. 
then all the small peers connect to the super peers. That right. way, probably the optimal and their service will be better. Right. But the problem is that the management is a little bit of hassle, right? So, I mean, we're not talking about those peers that are still peers. I mean, even if you have is super... Is a free software? Yeah. Super peers, like general. You know, peer means they're equal. So if someone is super, someone is equal. They're not really peers, right? So, so <laughs> some, some sort of structure. Yeah, even on campus, the other campus, you cannot be an because the limit uh, upload to download the pink one generation. So, you cannot upload it, you can only upload 10 times less than 10 times. So, in Rangers, so while my roommates watch a football game, and the uh, download is 1 gig, and the upload is also 1 gig. So, in, in both campuses. And yes, I said, the after they watch two games, they say, it's okay, it needs to use the network. But uh, actually, what we could uh, restrict uh, the upload yeah, speed, so it's very easy to, to restrict it to a very small number, such as one, two. But this software is not provided. Uh, but many software provides that. <laughs> so this way, I guess later on, I can look at incentive mechanism design, which means if you don't upload, forget about it, cannot watch it. People cannot watch anything. <laughs> 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 so, this uh, research is very related to BitTorrent and what you mean, like only that you're doing it on a buffer and then you're setting Yeah, so, I mean, the basic idea is kind of similar, but here is uh, streaming, you have different requirements, which means you want to download the data in order, and also you have to catch up the playback deadlines. So, if this is free, like, Well, that's uh, sorry. You're asking the business model, right? Yeah. Yeah. Google is free, right? <laughs> well, looks like your students look better than you do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how much time do I have? I need to plan a little bit. Yeah. I'll be quick. All right. So now, I guess we know, we're convinced, hopefully, that there's large numbers there, right? So, and now let's say, look at the law of large number one. Basically, if you have a P2K system, so what is the highest rate you can support? Okay? So essentially, we start with this model, what I call the Chernis model, which means it's very static. So in this case, you have one server, right? You have a bunch of peers. Each peer can upload at the risk rate U1, or can download at D1. So for now, we assume that network, you have enough bandwidth inside the network. Backbone is not a problem. And also, we assume that there's no multicast. OK, that's the current situation of the internet. Okay. So in this case, the thing is, it's more like a high school homework question. If you have a system like this, so what is the maximum video rate you can support? Well, I actually give this question to my um, undergraduate networking course. Most of them get it right. I mean, not most of them, half of them, I guess. say. So essentially, you know, we want to have this uh, universal streaming, so which means you want to take care of all the peers, right? So you want all the peers to get the video. It's not just one peer. So immediately what I'm going to happen is, the video rate will be, bound, will be limited by the server upload, right? If the server cannot send out the video, no way, okay? The second one will be, you cannot overwhelm the slowest peer, right? So the video rate cannot be higher than the weakest downloading peer, okay? That's uh, sort of obvious. The second one will be, in the whole system, the total uploading must greater than or equal to total downloading, right? That's the bandwidth supply and demand sort of inequality there. So which means your video rate will be bounded by, this is what, this is just total upload in your system, right? Server, all the peers, divided by n, is uh, what's the share for each peer. So essentially you can say, you know, the rate will be something like that. The minimum of those three factors. Then the question is, can you achieve that? Because that's a bound better. That's what you have, right? So the question is, can you achieve that bound? How can you achieve that bound? 
So essentially, we prove that for any boundary distribution among peers, you can find a perfect scheduling scheme such that this three highest rate can be supported. Okay? So essentially, the idea for this uh, perfect scheduling is that you want to be able to fully utilize uploading of all the peers. Okay? And also, that means peers with better access will upload more. <laughs> right? So since we give you one example here. If you have a server with uploading three, you have two peers, one is uploading two, another is uh, uploading one. So total uploading in your system is six, right? So you only have two peers that want to share the total uploading, so which means the streaming rate will be three. So you say, how can we achieve that? So essentially what's going to happen is, so let's say you have one, two, three, three rates, right? Now you give two substreams to this one peer, give one substream to this peer, then they're going to upload to each other, right? So at the end, everybody gets the three substreams, right? So in this case, the server uploading bandwidth is fully utilized. The peer uploading, peer uploading is fully utilized. So you can change the setting a little bit. You say, what if you know, the server is five, uh, the peer is two, this peer is one. The total uploading here is eight. Divided by two, you can support the streaming rate of four, right? So it's how are you going to do that? So you are going to have four streams. So essentially, the server is going to send this uh, one stream to both peers, and two streams to one peer. So one stream to one peer, then they are going to exchange among those two peers. Okay? By doing this, everybody gets the highest rate. So we actually show that for any pure bandwidth distribution, this is what we call the one hop relay can achieve the maximum rate. So which means you don't have to go to multiple hops. Essentially, as, a, as long as the server can do a careful scheduling, make sure that everybody gets the right amount of video they can upload to other peers, then you can fully utilize all the peer bandwidth. Yeah, that is good. But what's the schedule specified for? What, what's the schedule exactly here? So essentially, the server is going to send something to peer based on its uploading cap capability. Then that peer is going to send this data to other peers. Right? So if you have more uploading capability, so you get more from the server, then you can contribute to other peers. And what did you say that this has multi hop? Two hop. Essentially one hop relay. So essentially in this case, right, for this data, this green data, first go to this peer, then relay to this peer, right? This is one hop of relay. So what I'm saying here, you don't need multi hop relay. You only do this uh, sort of one hop relay, you can fully utilize all the peer uploading so you can achieve the highest rate. So here we assume the server knows everything, right? So which means when you get into the system, you talk to a tracker, you essentially tell the tracker what you have, how much bandwidth you have. Of course, in reality, that's a little bit different because uh, you know you can say I have this access, but you don't know how much you can really upload because you have to compete with the labels. Right, so actually, later on, I will have a paper talking about if you don't know exactly what's uploading, how are you going to do this dynamically to converge to that? So if you are interested in that, I can send you the paper. You can look at it. There are no constraints on that? Hmm? There are no constraints? No constraints. So here, we just look at sort of like the static version, right? We know that in a P2P world, it's not static. As actually, as a as first slide, we mentioned that peers are not accountable and they are not unpredictable. So we need to capture that. So essentially, you know, we, we, we talk about heterogeneous access, pure churn, fluctuations. And so all in all, if you don't have enough upload in your system, your quality will be bad, right? That's a, that's a fact you have to deal with. So essentially, you know, in order to capture that, so we have to develop some theoretic model to say, you know, if you do have this kind of dynamics, it's so what's going to happen, right? So in this case, what we do that is we assume so you can implement this uh, perfect scheduling, as I just mentioned, which means if you do have this uh, perfect scheduling, as long as the total uploading in your system is greater than the downloading demand, so you can support the video, right? So which means this is actually a sort of a, uh, assumption here. So in this case, to capture the pure chair, so we just assume that peer arrival, 
the system according to some pattern. In this case, to make it simple, we say Poisson. And the state in the system with general distribution time. Okay, it can be there long or short, but follow some distribution. So essentially, the, the, the streaming system is kind of multicast MG finite system. So, uh, so in this case, if you want to calculate what's the chance that you're going to have universal streaming in your system, essentially you want to calculate what's the probability of aggregate upload in your system is greater than the download demand, right? So essentially, everything is random. Upload is random because period come and go. Download at the same time is also random. So essentially, you want to calculate the probability that upload eliminates download. Okay. So essentially, you know, just give you a flavor of this model. If you look at just say we have two peer classes. So one is super peer, right? So they have lots of uploading. So another class is ordinary peer, so which means they may have just residential access. Okay. So of course, we want to assume that upload rate is for super peer is higher than the streaming rate, right? We also want to assume that the streaming rate is greater than the upload for the ordinary peer. Otherwise, it's no problem, right? I mean, no matter how many super peers in your system, you can, you can make it. So then you can assume you know, arrival pattern and also uh, the viewing time, basically how long a peer will stay in the system to watch the video. And all you're going to look at is basically the random number of you know, how many super peers in your system, how many ordinary peers in your system. Now you can calculate the probability of uh, universal streaming. So I'm not going to go into details of that. So essentially, you can predict the performance using some basic uh, formula here. So we are especially interested in the large system behavior, right? So we talk about what if you have large number of peers, but they follow the distribution of the bandwidth, right? So essentially, what we do is we let the expected value of both classes go to infinity, but keep the ratio to be some constant. So which means you may have maybe one third of peers the super peers, and two thirds the regular peer, right? But both go up. So what's going to happen? Then you can, you can show that, basically in the limit regime, the universal streaming probability is one if this ratio is greater than some critical value C. And if the ratio is smaller than some critical value C, no matter what you do, the streaming probability is zero, which means the whole system converges to the case that nobody can get anything. Nobody can get the whole thing, actually. So, but I guess the interesting happens if the ratio is actually equal to the critical value, but the scale up according to this star relation. Then you can show that the streaming probability is actually a function of this uh, sort of like little bit complicated factor here. So the f function here is actually the CCDF of a normal distribution, which means uh, in the limit, you can actually predict what is the chance of universal streaming. So overall, you can say, you know, no matter it's, uh, what is the relation between K and the C, the universal streamability can approximately calculate using this uh, formula here. You say, why are you interested in this? I, I'm, you know, I, I don't care. So, I mean, so the example I want to give out is really trying to show you that why large systems have better performance, right? Because remember, we said that when we do measurement, we know that we have large systems, so you're going to have better performance. Okay. So what we did is we do some simulation, right? So we have uh, some streaming rate and uh, upload rate. And for peers, you have uh, sort of like the viewing time. And we compare two systems. So one is a small system. Another one is a large system. For the small system, so I guess uh, every hour, you have 100 arrivals. So each peer will stay in average in a system for 30 minutes. For large system, so you have, each hour you have 10,000 arrivals. But uh, again, they stay in the system for half an hour in average. So essentially, you look at the performance. Basically, you know, the x-axis here is uh, kind of the ratio between super peer and normal peers. The y-axis here is what's the chance you cannot have universal streaming. Basically, the lower the better, right? So you want to, the streaming probability to be high. So essentially, you know that as you increase the ratio between super peers and normal peers, I think the quality improves, right? And now we have actually uh, three curves here, the blue curve and red curve corresponding to if the server bandwidth is different, what is the uh, sort of like quality difference here? So essentially, if you look at this uh, kind of critical value, 
basically, the, if you have more server uploading, the quality will be better, definitely, because uh, server also contribute, right? So in this case, if you increase the server bandwidth by seven, so you can increase the uh, performance by maybe 15%. Okay. But on the other hand, I guess uh, essentially you can look at a larger system, right? Again, you know, we keep everything the same, just scale up everything. So in this case, you know that there's a curve that's actually steeper than before, which means when you increase sort of like the ratio, the quality improves dramatically, which means in large system, even if you improve, sort of like increase the ratio a little bit, the performance improvement is actually pretty, pretty big. Okay, that's something pretty good, right? So we want this. And also at the same time, you can compare if you have the server have different bandwidths. Again, when you put more bandwidth on server, you can improve the quality. But now, if you want to improve the quality by 10%, you have to increase server bandwidth by 7. Which means, if you want to set up server for large system, so you have to get more bandwidth from server. So which means, for large system, increasing server bandwidth does not have the same sort of like a marginal uh, gain there. Okay. So essentially, another thing we look at is we scale the system, right? So we, say we continuously increase scaling factor and fix the ratio between super peers and the normal peers above the critical threshold, a little bit above, which means now we look at the quality. So which means when you scale it up, so at the end, the quality is perfect. In this case, basically saying that large system, they're not vulnerable to, let's say, pure churn, and they converge to expected performance. This is what we call the law of large number one here. Okay. So now, if you are interested in more results, as I said, you know, we, we are already out of time, but we have this paper talking about the scaling law of video buffering. So which means, you know, how much buffering you should put there, right? It depends on the size of the system. And also we design some system here, I mean, to address some practical issues like you raised. So basically, how do you achieve this in a realistic environment? So papers are available, all the papers are uh, on the website here. So uh, should I plan to wrap up in 10 minutes or so? Um, yeah. yeah, I guess so. Um, OK. Um, I think people can ask you like, uh, offline if they have more questions. But sure. Like, Okay, yeah, okay. So, I mean, let's just quickly go through the, what we call law of large number two. Actually, it's more interesting than the first one, but we don't have 10 minutes. Okay, so in, here we want to address the question is, we know that the P2P streaming, one drawback is delay, right? We say delay could be bad. So now we can say, really, say if you really want to push it, what's the best you can do? What is the minimum streaming delay you can achieve? So essentially, you know, uh, you know, we know that in a client server based solution, so you have to have streaming delay because first of all, from the server to the client, you have propagation delay. And to deal with basically the variations, the bandwidth, so you have to do buffering, right? At the client end, you have to do buffering. So which means you have buffering delay, you have propagation delay. But in P2P, it's actually worse because we know that in P2P, sometimes you have to go multiple hops, right? The so video, each hop, you have to have propagation delay. And at the receiver side, you still need to do buffering, not only to deal with bandwidth variation. You also have to deal with pure churn, right? Because uh, someone is uploading to you, suddenly this guy go away. So you have to put the like, extra buffering, right? So it's all contribute to the sort of like longer delay in P2P streaming. But the question we try to address here is, how real time can really push P2P streaming to? Okay. So basically, in order to answer this question, so let's start with a simple version. Is that if I have one chunk, how fast we can push this? So essentially, let's say, you know, in traditional case, you have a server, you have multiple clients, right? If you have only one chunk, if the server has a bandwidth of n, so which means you can send this chunk to all the, all the users, let's say, one time slot. That's it. But now, if, let's say, you do P2P. So in this case, the server has bandwidth one. Everybody has bandwidth one, right? They can upload one. But in this case, at the first time, the server can only give this chunk to one peer. Then this peer upload to another peer. This peer upload to another peer, right? So 
so on and so forth. At the end, the delay is n. That's too much. I mean, it's not realistic. Then later on, people propose this so like yeah, we can improve on this. Well, what I'm going to do is that do this a multiple tree based approach. So essentially, all the pairs are going to be organized into a multiple trees. In each tree, only one substring gets uploaded. So in this case, the server gives one chunk to its first peer, right? Now this f first peer can find out, send to two peers, so on and so forth. Depends on the final degree, the delay will be something like this, right? This is m times the log mn. That's better than m, OK? Now you say, can you do better? Can you do better than this m uh, log mn? So the key concept here is, in P2P, there are two concepts. So one concept is, what's the aggregate uploading bandwidth? So how much bandwidth you have among all the peers? Another concept is, how much bandwidth you can use to upload the chunk? Right? So this is what we call the usable bandwidth. So in client server model, the usable bandwidth equal to the total bandwidth. Right? Because the, the server always have the chunk. It can use all its bandwidth to upload this chunk. But in P2P, the usable bandwidth is actually less than or equal to the total bandwidth. Why is that? Because initially, nobody has this chunk, only the server. So which means initially, the upload usable bandwidth is one. You need to quickly grow that, right? So if you can grow that very fast, so you can make sure that the chunk can be delivered to peers very fast. That's the key concept here. OK. So this is what I call the content bottleneck. Basically, though, even though the peer has bandwidth, if they don't have the chunk, they cannot upload. They have to wait. That's a delay there. You can actually see this in one of your measurements graphs when the number of, 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 of grows steadily up to, say, 40. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So essentially, what I want to do here, if you really want to prove what is the delay bound, you really want to derive, say, what is the faster way, fastest way I can grow the usable bandwidth, right? If you can grow it very fast, then you can achieve shortest delay. So essentially, you know, for the single chunk, we show that the usable bandwidth, you can double it every time slot, essentially. So which means the minimum delay is 1 plus log 2 of it. This is better than m times log m of it already. So essentially, how are you going to do it? It's going to be something like this. So here, we look at a server with eight peers. So over time, we plot how many peers missing this chunk, or how many peers have this chunk. So essentially, at the beginning, eight peers missing this chunk. So what I'm going to do is the server is going to send one copy to one peer. Now one peer has it. Seven peers want it, right? So at the same time, I guess uh, this peer is going to send this and uh, double it every time slot. At the end, everybody has it, right? So which means this is what we call the slow ball here. It's like the formation of slow ball. I guess when you got it, you keep doing, keep uploading, keep uploading. At the end, everybody has it. So we actually show that this is a bound. You cannot do better than this. OK. So you said, oh, that's good. But we're talking about continuous streaming, right? We're not talking about one chunk. We're talking about at any given time, you have multiple chunks. OK, let me show you some uh, interesting results here. So you're talking about continuous streaming. At any given time, you have multiple chunks in transition, right? Because you cannot finish the transmission of one chunk in one time slot. So essentially, you're going to have multiple chunks in transition at any given time. How are you going to coordinate them? But everybody wants to grow the bandwidth. They're going to have a potential conflict. Okay. So essentially, so I'll just show you one example here. Okay, let's go back to this uh, eight period example. So now we're going to have a stream of chunks. Now we're, again, we're going to draw what is over time, what is the number of peers want to have each chunk? Right? So essentially, server is the same thing. The server gives one chunk to this uh, one peer. Now you have one peer have it. So now this guy is going to copy this chunk. Now you have two peers have this. At the same time, the server can send another chunk to this peer. So now what's going to happen here is this blue peers duplicate. At the same time, the server gives this one new chunk to this guy. This guy copies like this chunk. So which means over time, you are going to have all the chunks can be delivered in the same way as a single chunk case. And all the time, all the chunk can be delivered within a shortest delay bound. So we actually, this is what we call basically the P2P pipeline here. So which means if you have multiple chunks in transition, how are you going to coordinate them? OK. So essentially, we show that. So do you assume that all the users can uh, need to receive all the chunks? Because 
because you're doing a video right. security, right? Yeah. So maybe a user, uh, that user does not receive all the checks, but can still be called and play. Well, maybe they have, you know, worse quality, but... Yeah, here since we are talking about just bunk, so we, we do want everybody to get everything, right? But as you said, I guess uh, now even they have different coding techniques, which means even if you get a part of it, you can still do a decoding. But now we just assume that everybody has to get everything. So essentially we show that if you have a homogeneous system, the streaming delay bound equal to the chunk delay bound, which means that's the best you can do, okay? And uh, also, you know, this is what we call the slow ball streaming algorithm. Basically, if you do this kind of scheduling, you can make sure that there's no conflict between different chunks in a stream. And so this is some kind of comparison of this our slow ball streaming with tree-based streaming. So you can say that the performance is like, definitely better than tree-based, multiple tree, and the parallel down uploading and the sequential uploading there. So essentially, you know, we have more results, basically, you know, on this, uh, or if you have a heterogeneous system, so what is the impact of propagation delay? And what is the impact of the bandwidth variation? So if you are interested in that, you are referred to this paper and uh, uh, published in last year in ACM Multimedia there. So uh, conclusion, finally. So today we talk about a lot of large numbers. OK, hopefully uh, when you go home, you can still remember one or two of them. So essentially, we basically showed that the success of P2P video streaming is built up on a large numbers of peers even though each individual is unpredictable. And also, each peer can have lots of number of uh, peering connections, right? Uh, sometimes can be very dynamic. And also, we said that it depends on con uploading contribution from the super peers, which means well, just for now, we assume they are a true stake, so which means they don't care too much about what's the payoff, OK? So, and the law of large numbers basically saying that performance of P2P streaming basically converge to the bounds, but those bounds is uh, determined by bandwidth bottleneck, basically how much uploading peers have. And also content bottleneck, right, in the delay part, basically how fast you can grow the usable bandwidth. And also the peer dynamics, basically you, know, you need to have longer buffering necessary uh, to uh, deal with uh, peer churn and bandwidth uh, evaluation there. So I guess uh, you know a little bit. So sort of, you know you say what is what's lags? What are those open issues for this uh, P2P streaming? Several things. So one thing you can say is what about hybrid solution, right? So yeah, we talk a little bit about you know if you have some infrastructure, you're uh, going to have better performance. But how you to integrate maybe P2P streaming with CDN or native multicast, even caching? And we're talking about ISP friendly issue, right? We say that P2P, ISPs really hate P2P, but they cannot do, they don't know how to deal with it. You know? So one thing you can do is try to encourage what we call the locality of well. So which means when you do P2P sharing, try to find local peers first. I mean, pretty simple. But how to do that, it's not that straightforward. And definitely, you know, services like a VOD, video company, that have different requirements for the application level. And also maybe other platforms. I realize, I mean, WinMap, if I don't talk a little bit about this, that will be a little bit <laughs> off. So I mean, the philosophy here is users want video, mobile users also want video, right? So how are you going to deliver video to those uh, users with mobile device? Maybe again, I have different question there. And the last one is actually pretty interesting. Basically, the incentive and the economics study in P2P system. So uh, we just submitted a proposal uh, on this uh, P2P incentive, uh, how to integrate that with social networks. Uh, there are some interesting issues there. So, and also security, right? So you can imagine that whenever you talk about P2P, someone is going to say, oh, what if some peer changes something, send it to your computer, and we'll blow it up, right? So, which never happened. But, uh, so that's something I guess, uh, you know, uh, gets people worry a little bit about. Of course, a little bit of you know, acknowledgement here. Uh, at the point, we have lots of people doing uh, research on P2P video streaming. Faculty, uh, Pan, Professor Panwa, Keith Ross, Yao Wang. Of course, most of the work is done by postdoc and students, right? So uh, we have you know, lots of students here. We also have research sponsors, um, government, and CAD, YCAD, and also some industrial collaborators. With that, I my talk. <laughs>